Sophomore driver Chris Dodd continues what's been an excellent start to the 2017 campaign with a surprise pull here at Olton Park. He leads the race to grid to the green, more typically known for his short track prowess. Both of his career wins coming at the short tracks and uh, his most recent being at the Jennerstown Speedway back in round number four. Kyle Collins in the 48 up the inside of Dodd. He is not letting Dodd off easy with this one. Still dead even with him as we head towards the island section of the course. Tommy Turbo, Chris Dodd's teammate, starts well for once. In the number three machine, he starts fourth as the Artonalico machine of Tyler Faber stays alongside the three. Dodd already testing the track limits there, nearly got into the grass. Tyler Faber pushes too hard through turn number five, spins himself out, and Kyle Collins with a miraculous save to stay in second without losing too much time to Dodd. Sorry guys, my mistake. I'll get the car back on track. We'll see what we can salvage. Hopefully this doesn't get any worse. Why do I always jinx myself? Faber's incident really stacked up the middle of the field three wide through turn number six. Acevedo out of shape into Fitzwater. Durbin gets turned down the straightaway and Van Evenhoven with the blind hill in the way could not have seen Durbin spinning across the track. Van Evenhoven out of the races. He nearly rolls the car after contact with DJ Curtis. Curtis, the points leader, also appears to be out of it. Faber is likely out of it as well due to some sort of terminal engine damage and I'm surprised Durbin was able to even able to drive that car away uh, considering the hit he just took. On board Bill Liljohn through the carnage. He sees Durbin spin to the inside but he couldn't have known that Durbin was coming across the track until the last second. A good heads up move by him to keep himself mainly out of that accident. Only just a little bit of front end damage. In addition to Durbin, Favor, and Curtis who are limping themselves back to the pits, Denzel Williams in the 17 hasn't had a great start to the race. He's one of the two cars that clipped Tyler Faber when he was merging unsafely onto the circuit. Williams has got a big tire rub and they're going to have to beat the quarter panel out to get him back into the race. Tommy Turbo has lost a couple of spots since the beginning of the race. First to the 53 of Bunnell. And then to Lester in the 013, Turbo trying to get that spot back from Lester, but not without some contact there, as Lester got that car really sideways. In turn number one, manages to keep it straight, but Gambit's now all over him. In the five car, really all over him, as he nearly turns Lester down the straightaway. Lester pushing back towards Gambit, and Piat trying to go around the outside of both of them. Gambit into the 013 again, and this time, the 013 gets sent into the wall. The 82 is off the track as well. That was kind of out of character for Robert Piet to make a move that aggressive so early on in the 82, known for his level headedness early on in these races, just trying to make it to the finish. And he always seems to be up at the front at the end just due to his consistency. Today though, runs off the course as we saw so many drivers do in race one, just not a lot of grip up at the top end of the racetrack. Comes back on and clobbers Tommy Turbo. Both of them get back going again without too much of a problem, as does Casey Lester, actually. Wow, I can't believe you guys actually got this car fixed up. I really didn't think they were going to be able to get Faber out on track again at all, let alone so quickly. Great job by the 900 team. The O2 is all over the back of him though. He is still well off the pace and Munoz turns him off of Druids. Hard hit into the wall for Faber and I'm sure some of that disappointment that he expressed for himself earlier is uh, going to be replaced with some anger for Munoz there. <laughs> this about sums up my season. Getting dumped by the guy who couldn't sign up for the series correctly. Matt McIntyre in the Oreos machine going for an overtake on Matthew Engelram exiting turn five, but he spins himself out 
getting into the 47 after pushing it too hard through that corner. Engelram keeps it going as Lester, Curtis, and Piet head to the grass to try and get by the recovering 58. Matt McIntyre had a great rookie year. Has not been able to back it up though here in 2017. Coming to the end of lap four, Kyle Collins still all over Chris Dodd for the lead. Third and fourth are currently Bonnell and Alexander Rowe, who are run, running comparable lap times. Behind them, it's quite a big gap. Back to John Gambit as the field begins to spread out a little bit. Things beginning to heat up a little bit inside the top four. That's John Bonnell side by side with Alexander Rowe heading into Knickerbrook as Collins makes a move. He might have a little bit more straight line speed than Dodd actually, but Dodd able to recover using the outside line through Clay Hill. Very impressive job by Dodd there. Dodd of course going for his second win of the season. Collins going for his first win ever. Zayden Davidson is side by side with James Shelley for position. Davidson runs off though. He was a little bit wide heading into the island corner there. Manages to get it saved without going off down in turn five though and because of that won't lose too many positions. Robert Piet off the track again in the 82. Normally the master of consistency but uh, Olden Park really seems to be getting the better of him. Little John up 10 spots from her starting spot already gets into the side of Joe Lethanen as Lethanen missed the apex of turn 11 by a country mile. Prudence threw it in there but couldn't get the job done. Nice job by Prudy to save the car, keep that car going in a straight line and not lose a spot to John King who's had a pretty solid run to start the day as well. The Little Johns don't have as much of a budget as some of the bigger teams so they didn't have some of the confidence heading into the international tour that they normally do, but pretty showing that driving talent is all that you need to succeed here in the Hart Series. Aiden Shepard and Mitchell Carter racing hard for the 28th spot. Mitchell Carter throws it in to try and clear. Aiden Shepard before the corner is unsuccessful, goes into the marbles and comes back on the track, clipping Sam Curtis. Carter's gonna beat Curtis to the racing line. Curtis completely an innocent victim there. We've seen that a few times over the course of the weekend. Tommy Turbo into the pits at the end of lap number six. He sustained some right side damage after earlier contact with Robert Piet. Hasn't been on pace since. Might be due to a tire up or a tire going down and that's why they brought him in. Even if they fill him full of fuel though, he's not going to be able to go the rest of the way. Real shame for that team. Qualified fourth, but it doesn't look like they're going to finish anywhere close. Collins continues to challenge Dodd for the lead, but he now has company in the form of John Bunnell. Bunnell deposited of Alexander Rowe for that third spot a few laps ago and has since been closing in on these top two. Collins might ha have a look on Dodd here, gets into him there. And Dodd, with a miraculous save there, goes to the grass to save the car. He will slip into third. Amazing that he was able to keep it in a straight line at all. Kyle Collins heads to the race lead as a result. John Bunnell though was able to close in on him after that contact and he has a look to the inside through Knickerbrook. Kyle Collins uses all of the racetrack all the way to the white paint on the outside to try and shut the door but before they hit the final couple of right handers. Yes Kyle Collins will maintain the lead. Great job to hold off a hard charging John Bunnell there. Robert Piet pits his car at the end of lap 9. He had fallen to 32nd and I, I think it's a similar situation to Tommy Turbo. Damage just making it impossible for him to run with the rest of the field. Like Turbo, I don't think he's going to be able to go the rest of the distance on fuel even if they fill him all the way up. It's a real shame for him because I think this is as close as the Dutch driver is going to get to a home race. John Bunnell with a huge lunge on Kyle Collins through turn five. Can't get the move to stick as the top four approach the first lap car. Ike Durbin 
in the 86 machine. Amazed he was able to keep that car on track at all, uh, albeit he is seven seconds a lap slower. But uh, after the really hard hits he took on lap one, I'm amazed that thing will even drive in a straight line. Alexander Rowe uses Ike Durbin as a pick to pass Chris Dodd. They both lose a lot of time to these top two, though. Running five and a half seconds back of the race leader are John Gambit and Blake Kamphausen, who are racing for fifth position at the moment. John Gambit has had a really solid start to the day. Uh, he's been in the top five pretty much the whole event thus far. Blake Kamphausen looking for his best career effort, if he can keep this one up, by quite a large margin as well. His previous best finish is 18th, so the New Jerseyite looking rather strong today in the new scheme for the International Tour. Collins again under pressure from John Bunnell in the 53. He's running wide in the 48 car, off into the grass, and that will make John Bunnell's job nice and easy. He swings on by the 48 car as we're coming up on the second lap car. The 17 of Denzel Williams, Bunnell by without any trouble at all. Here comes Collins and Alexander Rowe. Williams tries to go to the inside to let Collins go by on the outside but I, that caught Collins way off guard as Collins was going to look to the inside. Now the 48 and the 36 stuck behind the 17 through the more technical section of the course as they continue to lose time to John Bunnell. A little bit of an experience for Williams as a lap car, I guess. Best thing he could have done was just held his line. Collins finally passed the 17 car. He lost a couple of seconds this lap, I think. Now it's Gambit, Camphausen, and Indumi getting caught behind the 17 as Williams continues to not choose a line. Gambit trying to go around the outside of him but gets into the grass. And now he's thrown away his top five run, I imagine, by going off in turn number five. Going to lose a lot of time there to his fellow competitors and is now going to come into the clutches of John Arndt and Tristan Wilhoyt in the 16. Jerry Guerra and John Art now find themselves on the brink of a top 10 effort. Tristan Wilhoit currently runs in 10th. Jerry Guerra just got into the side of John Art, and Art gets sent around off of turn number five. Guerra nearly spun himself out in the process. That is not going to be a popular move down in Texas. Blake Camphausen had been holding on to a solid top five run when a tire went on that 441 car. And he's forced to limp it around the two and three quarter mile road course, losing positions to Prudence Littlejohn, Carl Dumian, and Demir Bejinov. The only good news for Camphausen, I think, is that he will be able to make it from his pit stop to the end of the race, so he won't lose any more time, at least once he gets to pit road. Bill Littlejohn is in a hurry to get by the lap traffic of the 17, and we've seen how this has gone time and time again into the marbles in turn number four and into the wall goes Littlejohn. Amazing job by Littlejohn to get that thing stopped before sliding off in turn number five. He's actually not going to lose too much time. Uh, Denzel Williams actually clipped the back of him and spun out himself, so kind of funny how that ended up happening. Bill Littlejohn does have some right side damage, though. He might want to pit for that soon, make this his scheduled stop. All on his own, Estefas Cortez was just off the racing line heading into turn four, runs off the road, and unlike Little John, can't save the car, gets it sideways heading into the corner, takes out William Brock and Matthew Engelram with him. John King going for a move on Matthew Engelram, didn't really break at all there, just full YOLO into turn number five, trying to get some spots as he nearly makes it three wide, getting by Denzel Williams. With Camphausen out of contention, that gives Prudence Littlejohn the tail end spot in the top five. She's up 17 spots already from her starting position, Carlin Dumian. One of the best in the business. All on his own, just went off in turn number four and clobbered the front quarter of Prudence Littlejohn's car. That's the second time 
that something similar has happened to Prudy. And Jokey Lethenden nearly did something similar just a few laps ago. And Prudence is rightfully furious. Did they cut this race down by 40 laps? Or are these just the worst drivers on the f***ing planet? Ike Durbin now holding up Estavis Cortez in the 62. Piet used. Ike Durbin is a bit of a pick. And I imagine Cortez is getting mighty impatient. With Aiden Shepard going by as well, he gets into the back of the 86 sending. The 86 around, also turning the 14 around in the process. Estavis Cortez loses yet another spot, not this time to Sam Curtis. Now it's Blake Camphausen all over the back of the 62. Camphausen back out on track after the tire failure sent him out of the top five. Well outside the top five, he's now sitting in 33rd behind Cortez. Might be up a couple of spots this lap, trying to get inside the top 20, but he's too impatient as he spins himself off in turn number five. Good save by Cortez as Camphausen's day just gets worse. He's actually going to go a lap down now to John Bonnell, the race leader. The leaders have caught Ike Durbin and in a terrible spot to do so. Down in turns four and five, I'm really glad John Bonnell didn't decide to make an over-aggressive move in Island Bend. We've seen how that has turned out, but the 53 is indecisive and Kyle Collins goes through. In the 48, he's back to the race lead. Alexander Rowe and Camphausen, along with Dodd, it looks like as well, is going to go by. And Bonnell goes from first to fourth in this lap, still being a little bit indecisive. He had to kind of just let those guys by. There was too much of a speed differential. Didn't want to risk crashing that number 53 car after having such a good run so far. Bejenov has been alongside Gambit for the last few corners. Gambit's been doing an expertful job of holding off the experienced Kazakh driver. Will Hoyt's off the circuit and into Gambit. Off the two of them go. Bejenov through without too much damage. He got awfully lucky there as Gambit and Will Hoyt returned to the circuit. Baskinger also went off and went for a quick spin. Henry Williams with a little bit of a piece as well. What a mess. Just a few laps before pit stops, and Alexander Rowe starting to show what he has. He's right on the back bumper of Kyle Collins. Chris Dodd has actually picked up his pace a little bit. He fell well off the back bumper of Kyle Collins, but he's now got back by John Bunnell and is trying to run down the number 36 and 48. Alexander Rowe stays tucked in behind for now as Colin, Collins takes a bit of a midline there to protect. Oh, Aiden Shepard's up in smoke. Might be due to some of the damage he got earlier from the Tyler Thaber incident. That is really unfortunate for the 14 team. They were improving just based on kind of staying out of trouble, but that's all gone down the drain now. Collins hits the pits at the end of lap 27. That hands the lead to Alexander Rowe in the number 36 car for the first time this race. Let's see what he can do in fresh air. Dodd and Bunnell still closely behind. Bunnell finally clearing Camphausen. Dodd takes full advantage of his front most pit stall to get out in front of Alexander Rowe. Rowe actually had a checkup exiting the pits. Here comes Kyle Collins. Can he beat Dodd out? Dodd with a phenomenal stop overall it appears as he merges to the outside of Collins. Dodd not letting Collins get clear out of turn number three. Dodd running up the outside. He's going to be on the outside into the rough stuff in turn number four. Can he make the pass on the outside line? It would take a phenomenal amount of driving ability to get it to work, and it looks like he might do it. Still alongside him in turn five. He now has the advantage coming out of the corner, and it's Chris Dodd back to the race lead. Did not expect him to make his way back to the front that quickly. He kind of fell off the pace after losing the lead to Collins and Bonnell earlier on, but now he's ramped up the pace off the pit cycle, and he's once again got the lead. Just 10 more laps to hold it off for his second win of the season. A hungry pack of cars racing for around 20th spot. Bill Littlejohn, Tony Green, Jake Baskinger three wide. Out of turn 11, contact made between Littlejohn and Green. Baskinger hard into the pit wall. 
for the second round in a row. Someone has plowed into the end of the pit wall, green into the inside pit road wall. Hope everyone's okay in that. That's definitely going to take Baskinger out of the race, and I'm sure that's going to remove green from contention from a decent run as well. Same group of cars a few corners later. Michael Harvey off the road trying to get around Ike Durbin to stay in contention with Bill Littlejohn. He spins his car entering turn five. Ike Durbin with a little bit of damage, but I don't think that really matters with how slow Durbin already is. Michael Harvey, form the race winner back in Drummond, will fall a few positions. Collins is not done with Dodd. What a run through turn five. He just had didn't get into the side of the 88 there. He will stay in second for now. Dodd with a good run off the corner, but if Collins continues to challenge him, Dodd may not get to the checkered flag so easily. Denzel Williams, a really big nuisance for Alexander Rowe. Rowe has been stuck behind the 17 for the last half lap or so, and I gotta say that's probably pretty justified. 17 into the wall. Again, really won't affect the 17's position on the racetrack. Alexander Rowe on the meanwhile will likely not have the ability to go for the race lead. Top three drivers nose to tail. They're coming up on some lap traffic. Kyle Collins has had a couple more attempts on Chris Dodd for the lead. Both of them unsuccessful. John Bunnell in the meanwhile has closed the gap from two seconds to just a few car lengths on Chris Dodd's lead. Now he runs alongside Kyle Collins. He needs to get himself into a position so that he can challenge Dodd for the victory. Still side by side, dead even between the two through turns two and three. Collins has the optimal line through there and Bunnell, like Dodd did a few laps earlier, is going to have to run it around the outside of the 48. So treacherous on the top side of the racetrack there in the island bend, but he gets it done, and now he has Dodd locked in his sights. A lap and a half to go for Chris Dodd now as they approach the lap car of Tony Green. This is where the race was decided back in race one, and this may be where it's decided again. John Bunnell up the inside in the number 53 dead even with him but Dodd with a good run on the outside of the corner he's going to need to clear Bunnell in order to get by Green very efficiently otherwise Bunnell may use Green as a pick Green not being the most gracious of back markers right now really just needs to pull off to the side to let these three battle it out for the victory finally pulls it off the road a little bit but comes back on taking over the racing line Kyle Collins tries to take advantage of Dodd and Bunnell having to check up a little bit but Green gets in his way. Dodd back past the 32, as is the 53, coming to the white flag this time. Bunnell way out of shape in turn number one. Green actually challenging to get by, back by him. I'm not sure what he's doing, really, in the number 32. Seriously. What? Come on. But Bunnell, now several car lengths back of Dodd. He really needs Dodd to make a critical mistake here. Robert Piet coming up in the distance, but they're not going to get to him in time, I don't think. He's just not too far off the pace. Dodd with just half a lap to go to claim the victory here in Olton Park. John Bunnell throws it in again in turn five. Can't get there, but Dodd with a slow exit in turn five. Here comes John Bunnell to the inside. Dodd can't shut the door. And they're side by side up the hill towards Knickerbrook. Kyle Collins finally getting by Tony Green now, potentially. They're still side by side for that spot. Dead even into Knickerbrook. It's been tricky to make a pass here in this corner. And Dodd holds it well on the outside. Bonnell still has his nose there. Can he clear him before the final couple of right-hand corners? Dodd's trying to make sure he doesn't, but Bunnell does nonetheless. And with just one corner to go, can Dodd get, the, get a crossover move going into the final corner? No, Dodd misses the apex. And John Bunnell is going to claim his very first Hark victory here in Olton Park. Kentucky native John Bunnell heading to victory lane. 
Normally more of a short tracker, but he really showed his road racing prowess here today. Chris Dodd, close second place finish, hard fought battle on that last lap with Bunnell and notably a clean one. Something we really didn't see too much this weekend. Kyle Collins with a close third. Alexander Rowe lost eight seconds to those leaders due to getting held up by Denzel Williams to finish fourth. Demir Bejena finished fifth. Once he got in clean air, he separated himself by over five seconds over his fellow competitors. Fairly typical for Demir on these road courses. James Shelley finishes sixth. Jerry Guerra, P7. Prudence Littlejohn recovers for an eighth place effort. Henry Williams comes across the line in ninth. And Matthew Engelram with a quiet tenth place finish.